Hello viewers, today is November 10th, 2020 and we're going to take a look at the telephones in the house. Starting off in the bedroom, we have a Uniden digital or Digitan spread spectrum telephone 900 megahertz model EXS 9960 and the base is a slightly different model the base is model number EXS 9980 next we have a Clarity telephone this is a 5.8 gigahertz model and the number is C4230 and these telephones are quite interesting a lot of fascinating features to them the handset earpiece is ergonomically flawless it's a pretty nice set in a lot of different ways I'm having a problem with these batteries it takes a very odd shaped battery it's a 3.6 volt nickel cadmium battery uh, not nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride rather and this pack is very difficult to find there's not a lot of phones that used it this is the Castar brand which I've been having a problem with I bought batteries from this brand for the first time several months ago it was while I was out of work so it would have been May or June somewhere around there I needed batteries for the VTEC 5831 and so I went on to the computer looked on a couple of different websites and I discovered that there was seemingly a shortage in cordless phone batteries which I thought was kinda odd because you know, I think of the items that there would be a shortage on during a pandemic situation and you know you think of food or cleaning supplies not not really batteries but especially rechargeable ones because you can use them over and over I think maybe everybody was sitting home talking on their phones and burning up the batteries I don't know I thought that was kind of a thing of the past everybody just works on their stupid iPhones now but anyways the point is there was a cordless phone battery shortage and this Castars brand was one of the very few brands that was still there and offering batteries at a reasonable price so I bought a set of batteries from them and it was deplorable it was so bad it you couldn't even use it you press talk and it would just blank out immediately and we're not talking about Panasonic phones that have a tendency to do that I'm talking about VTEC phones that don't really have a tendency to do that so I wrote to them and I said the batteries stink they sent me another set same deal now what I will give them is that they had pretty decent customer service because they fixed it in the sense that they ate the cost of both sets the first one I purchased in the replacement and they ate the cost of shipping for sending me the replacement set sending me the first set and sending both back so they made it right but the product still stinks when I look for batteries for these even though the battery shortage seems to have gone away I still could not find any batteries that were reasonably priced for the set except for the Castar. Because they did it right as far as the customer service went, I decided to give them another try. And then they work this time to an extent, but they're still terrible because I tried this up all night and I made a call for a few minutes this morning and it took the battery down two pippers I put this on speakerphone it'll work but look at that, it just lost a pipper already it's outrageous and you can even see when you when you press a button the screen flicks, the backlight flicks because the battery isn't strong enough it, it's outrageous so I don't think that phone would last more than 20 minutes or so on a call 
which is a shame because I may call for longer than 20 minutes all the time. Anyways, so what I'll probably have to do is modify the battery compartment to take a standard connection. I don't like to modify things, but in this case we're going to have to to make it useful. Anyways, moving on, we have an AT&T 100 desk phone, an AT&T 210 trim line, a VTEC 5.8 GHz Trio. Let's see if I can grab the model number without the thing falling off this time. Model number A, no, IA5877. And near the computer, there is a Uniden 900 megahertz compact phone, which is stuck to the table for some reason. This is model number EXI376. And on the other side of the desk we have a Panasonic. Here it is. KX TGF 570. On the wall we have a VTEX CS6114 with one missed call. And a Gortelco 2554 made in USA. Lastly, in the bedroom, there is a Uniden DCT 1580. In the computer room, there is a General Electric large button memory phone. And I'll grab the model number off of it this time because it's not stuck to the wall. Model 29266A, and I believe this was made by the Atkins, it was made in the Malaysia. I don't see where the information is, but I'm pretty sure that it was made by the Atkins or the Atlinx. And then next to that, there is another Clarity 5.8 GHz handset also with the same crummy battery as the one in the bedroom. Over here there is an AT&T telephone. This is a model number EL51103. Over here there's another VTAC 5.8 GHz handset. By the other computer, there is another AT&T telephone. This is a model number CO82209. And over here, there is an AT&T 1820 digital digitan answering system corded telephone which looks exactly at home there somebody wrote in on one of the videos I did of this phone and they said the sound quality was quite good I have to agree this telephone is a notch above average when it comes to the audio quality of the calls over here there is a Uniden DCX150 and lastly in the computer room there is another AT&T 210. In the bathroom there is a Uniden DWX207. In the living room there is another Panasonic handset. A Uniden DWX207 and a Clarity 5.8 GHz C43 uh, 4230HS Clarity Professional that is Downstairs there is another Panasonic handset 
I wanted to put a clarity over here but the range wasn't good enough. By this computer there is the third VTEC 5.8 GHz TRIO's handset and a Cortelco 2500 set. Over here there is another Cortelco 2500 and by this computer in the shop there is a Uniden DCX150 an AT&T 210 a General Electric corded phone with digital digitan answering system or messaging system as they want to call it this is model number 29870GE1-A and this is this is made by the Atkins but yet it uses the Thompson's power adapter which is kinda of strange oh actually it says Thompson's as well okay so it's made by the Thompson and the Atkins I think somebody explained that to me once but I forget what the explanation was uh, I wish I wouldn't forget everything on the wall there is a Panasonic over here by the studio there is another DCX150 the wooden wall phone a Bell Systems, I believe it's by Western Electric yeah, Western Electric ringer and then of course that infamous ringer over there that doesn't work right someday I'll fix it and lastly over here there is the Emerson's talking caller ID box and the AT&T 210 with a 50 foot cord I bought this cord because the 25 foot one wasn't quite long enough to use over there and some people on the reviews was saying that it's not really 50 feet but I think it's 50 feet just fine because I can go over here and sit in my chair and the cord reaches just fine and it's not you know it's it's stretched but it's not anywhere near um, maximum there's not a lot of tension on the phone so I think it's 50 feet just fine I don't know what people were having a problem with other than they just don't know how to measure I guess anyway so that's that that will conclude the telephones in the house as of 1110 2020